Hello everyone. So Cricket Australia has officially announced that Pat Cummins, as expected, is Australia's new test captain. Now this is a pretty mundane choice, if you like. He was the vice captain. It's to be expected and look, there's nothing wrong with it being a mundane choice. You go from vice captain to captain. That's the point of the vice captain is to become the captain if the regular captain is sick or injured. But this isn't necessarily a permanent elevation have to know. And who was chosen as the vice captain, Steve Smith, suggests that it may be just for this test series. And in fact, as has been pointed out by a few commentators, if Pat Cummins becomes injured or ill or just decides to rest for a, a test, as they often do with fast bowlers, um, Steve Smith would become the actual captain. So if perhaps Pat Cummins plays the first three tests, then they decide that, well, he's a bit injured and they or needs a rest and they decide to bring in let's say Mitchell Stark presumably presuming that he doesn't play in the first test um, then we would have Mitchell Stark in the team and Steve Smith as captain because I'm predicting that Jai Richardson will be in the opening team and Mitchell Stark will miss out um, and also if they decide to play two spinners and Pat Cummins ends up missing out Steve Smith becomes captain and I think that that may happen for one or maybe two tests out of the Ashes. I, I think Pat Cummins will certainly play for most of the tests, and he may well play in all of them. But it also, and that's one reason why bowlers, particularly fast bowlers, aren't very often made test captains, because they don't always play that many matches in a row. They often get injured, and particularly Cummins, like he was out for six years in a row. So I see it as, as sort of a reward for his good performance for the past two or three years and reliability, consistency, well, well and truly deserved. But I also don't see it as a permanent thing. So let's say for one example that Pat Cummins plays in the first three tests and then is rested for the fourth. Steve Smith comes in as captain <coughs> and then Cummins comes back in the fifth test and goes back to being captain. That would be very good for Australian cricket because we will then get a little bite-sized glimpse as to what Steve Smith might be like if he was captain again. And we all know Steve Smith as a captain was really, really good for Australian cricket. One of our best captains that we've had in a very long time. And as I said before, he, he was leading from the front, our best batsman, and his batting improved, which is Alan Border-like. And Alan Border is probably the best captain that we've had in my lifetime. Now, I know there was a professional captain of Mark Taylor who personally was really bad with his form, but as a leader was really good. And of course, we had the great returns of Ricky Ponting, which was probably due to, in a large part, the fact that he had good players in his side. And of course, Michael Clark was considered by many to be a good captain too. And we've had a number of really good captains, in fact, but Tim Payne probably wasn't one of them. And I think we've got to be realistic with that. Um, Tim Payne did, did a role that was required because we just lost our captain and vice captain due to an unfair ban and I'm going to say it was an unfair ban I, I really don't think that was justified even slightly since I don't think either of them deserve to be punished at all for what someone else did but even if they were you know ball tampering is a one or two match penalty and they were banned for a year and I think that was disgraceful but uh, the fact is that we needed to have someone in there, and we needed someone with integrity. Unfortunately, as we now know, that was a lie, because Tim Payne had done stuff just as bad as what Smith and Warner had done. Worse, really, um, since Smith and Warner hadn't actually done anything. Um, but nonetheless, we needed that figurehead to get us through there. And, um, and look, we lost a lot of matches. We had some terrible selections, and we really stuffed up. We weren't really building to anything. It was more a stopgap matter measure until Smith and Warner came back, and then we had a lot of uncertainty for a long time. There were some positives to come from it, but then we didn't always build on them. I mean, Curtis Patterson, for example, had a great couple of test matches, and then was unceremoniously dumped when Smith and Warner returned, and hasn't even gone close to making the side since. And you know, there were a lot of these positives that we got from that period that's just been completely ignored. I mean, Marcus Harris did really well for a little while and we didn't care about that. So there were a lot of 
things about that that just weren't really built on and I think a lot of that goes back to Payne look he did what he was asked to do and I think he'll look back and he'll be named as a former Australian captain it'll certainly be better for him personally than it would have been if he'd never been made captain but whether it was good for our team is another question and I'm not sure that it was I certainly think that had we decided not to ban Smith and or Warner we would have had a bumpy couple of months with a bit of criticism but I think as a team we wouldn't have lost that massive gap that we had let alone the infighting and abuse from other teams and so forth um, and I think that when we look back at, at this and I know look it will be controversial to put Smith back in the top job but I think that in a lot of ways this will be a good thing moving forward now there is an alternative which is that Cummins stays in the top job um, but I think if they were planning on doing that they wouldn't have named Smith as vice captain I think they would have gone with Labuschagne but, the, which is probably the second best option, or, or Nathan Lyon is another option. Um, Nathan Lyon, the only reason against him is that he's getting a bit old, but I mean, being a spinner, a lot of spinners play until their 40s. So it could have been viable to have picked Lyon. And in some ways, Lyon was a bit unlucky not to be picked. Um, he's been very consistent. Spinners don't really get injured and they can play for very long. Um, so. Lion may have, may have been a better choice and Labo Chagnay I think the only issue with Labo Chagnay is that he may have some injury concerns he, I think he, he hurt himself he didn't, like he's not going to miss any matches but there is that concern um, that he may develop an injury at some point just the way he plays I guess um, yeah so I, I think the naming of Smith is almost saying look if you go well here, we might consider you to become captain as early as the end of the Ashes. I don't think it'll happen mid-Ashes, but, you know, and it's probably reasonably unlikely to happen in the very next, se next series, but it might. It, it will really, I think it's more of a test of the public reaction to it. And we all know that some people think that he deserves to be banned. Some people think he should have been banned permanently. And some people like me, think that he shouldn't have been banned. That his role was not significant enough. And, and we need to be clear on what his role was in it. His role was, I mean, the worst thing that he did was that after the event, when we had the press conference, he listened to what Cameron Bancroft told him and then he repeated that, even though he knew that it wasn't true. So he told a lie to the press and he also, you know, made it sound like it was the whole team was involved when uh, I mean in, in a realistic sense it wasn't and so he was he was obviously doing that for to, to help the team but it didn't help the team and it might have helped the team in different circumstances and if Cameron Bancroft had been more honest but I have to acknowledge that that was at a bare minimum a very stupid thing and something he should have thought about a bit more clearly all he had to do was to let Cameron Bancroft answer the questions Bancroft would have fallen on his sword and faced probably the same penalty that he did end up facing, uh, which I think was a fair penalty. Um, effectively, seven or eight test ban, and I think that's fair. And I think that's a, that's a sort of penalty for the amount of lying and deceit that he had. It would have been the, the harshest penalty for ball tampering in history, but I think it was of that level. But Smith made the mistake of trusting Bancroft. And I think in the future, Smith will be careful not to trust people, particularly not to support them to that level. Of course, Warner's um, fault was in not trusting his teammates. So kind of the opposite mistake, because of course, Warner went up and said to Stark and Cummins, you guys were involved too. Uh, I know that you scuffed up the ball, which they did. But, you know, uh, it would have looked really bad and I think Warner was also wrong because it would look really bad if they'd gone up there and said hey look yeah we scuffed up the bat ball you know there was ball tampering on both sides had they said that it would have looked really wrong so I think that Warner did do the wrong thing too um, but what has been reported that he did is completely not true at all um, but certainly the bulk of the problem was with Bancroft and 
I think that we really overstated what Smith and Warner did. And I know in cricket we can be very harsh, but I think that we were too, far too harsh on those two. Um, and probably not harsh enough on Mitchell Stark. And I think that Stark's involvement wasn't ideal either, because of course he tried to get Warner banned, which was really unfair. And so I think that we've got to look at that and sort of say, well, Stark, we're not considering for captaincy either because his role in it was very upsetting, very unsettling, very destabilising. Um, but anyway, so look, it, depending on how the public views it, we may end up with Smith back. But maybe not. Maybe we can have Cummins for a while and we can see how that goes. So it's an interesting thing from that dynamic and I think this is the right move to make. Anyway, that's it from me. Bye-bye.